the night of the living dead come about? George and I were having lunch in a tavern around the corner from the late Dimage, the company where we all worked, remember? We were in uh, <laughs> Sam Marini's eating grilled provolone sandwiches and sipping beer with Richard Ritchie and complaining about the commercial jobs that we lost, how fickle the advertising agencies were. And I uh, turned to you and Richard and said, uh, what if we get 10 of us together, just the people that work at Leighton Image and, and a few of our friends, we'd and just get 10 people and uh, each of us kick in 600 bucks. Even if we have to borrow the money, we'd have 6,000 uh, bucks. We should be able to make a, a, a movie on that or at least you know get it down to a work print. Sh uh, shoot it in 35, print it in 16, and we should be able to do a better movie than those things with, with rubber masks that we've all seen. And, uh, I like those things. Huh? Yeah, those are amazing. Masks. I, mean, I think it's interesting, though, to to consider from a from a point of view of uh, first of all, not having very much money to work with, and secondly, then to uh, get together, cobble together whatever little money you can to make some kind mm. of movie that you could almost certainly sell to someone. Hopefully, uh, yes. The horror thing was almost backed into in that way. I know that one of the rationales was that if, um, if uh, Bill Cardill, if someone bought those movies that were on uh, Chiller Theater at that time, <coughs> someone would certainly buy anything that, that we could do. Yeah, that, that was part of the rationale. Yeah, I mean, I think important to say, too, that initially we, we wanted to make a movie. Right, right. Uh, and we backed into horror after we tried to talk to various people we about didn't know other it. things. <laughs> we didn't know anyone who had any horses. So that Western, right. was Western was out. <laughs> Uh, no one listened whenever we would talk about something else. Why didn't we shoot in color? Who wants to explain that one? Well, we did talk at one point <laughs> about converting to 16 millimeter color, mm -hmm. and but then decided, eh. Wasn't it essentially the fact that we couldn't afford Initially color? it was, but yeah. I, I don't think ultimately that was, because then when we raised the extra dough, I mean, unless I'm remembering it wrong, wasn't there a point where we decided, well, all we'd have to reshoot is a little bit of stuff and we could switch yeah. to color 16. Mm -hmm. There were, there were a number of considerations like that that eventually somehow got committed out of the production, shooting a different ending, you know, was the ending too, too much of a downer. Oh, yes. There were a couple of right. instances Oh, that like was that. long <laughs> after. Yeah. That, I mean, was, even that was well after that. When Russ and I <laughs> drove to New York with the first print oh, in yes. the car, and the first people that looked at it were Columbia, it was Columbia Pictures, and they wanted us to change the ending. And we did, you know, sort of bravely say, get out of my life to a couple of people. <laughs> Are you people crazy? Right. Then about six months later, we were calling them back and saying, can we make a deal? Uh, How would you like, you like that ending change, sir? the lady <laughs> holding the torch. We'd, we've thought about it. We <laughs> talked it over with our friends, and yes, we'll do anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, whenever we were talking about $6,000, Richard Ritchie said, you guys are crazy. You'll never make a movie. I can't believe I'm hearing this. And uh, we said, does that mean that you want out? And he said, oh, no, I'm in. <laughs> so he came up with his $600, and we went back to the studio, and we talked to Russ. Russ he was said, one of the oh, only yeah. guys that had $600. In his yeah, that's right. He, was, he had a real job. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us had to borrow the money from parents and finance companies and so on. But Russ said, sure, I'm in. I'll, I'll spend the afternoon working out some figures. And he got done and he comes out with this gloomy look on his face and he says, I got some real bad news. It's, we can't do it for 6000 It's going to cost 12000 <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> we said, oh, there goes the movie. <laughs> no movie. 
That's a story I didn't know. Originally, yeah. you, you came up with double what we had. Huh? Well, we had image 10, the 10 people that kicked in 600 right. each. That was the 6,000. And George was in utter gloom. He said, you know, it's all down the drain because if we bring in another 10 people for another 600, there's no percentage left. There's no profits for anybody. And that's when we hit on the idea, well, the first 10 people like you and Marilyn Eastman and, mm -hmm. and so on, those people were going to contribute not only money, but they were going to work on the picture in important ways. So, so those people uh -huh. deserved a higher percentage than the second 10, and that's how we, we brought the, the second 10 in at a reduced percentage so there was some money left over for the hopeful prop, hope for profits. I mean, it also have to say that by the time we were done, it cost more than twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. One hundred and fourteen thousand. Yeah. One hundred fourteen. Yeah, with the deferments. But the amount, we, the amount yeah. of cash was like around seventy. Yeah, between sixty and seventy mm -hmm. somewhere, which is still, I mean, bargain basement. Even you know, uh, nineteen sixty-seven dollars. That's still uh, pretty mm -hmm. unheard of. Dirt cheap. Also important to say that you can't just raise six thousand dollars and go out and make a movie i mean we had equipment and know-how and right. between us between your equipment our equipment we had two separate companies um yeah. we didn't have to go rent stuff we knew how to use the stuff and you guys did the makeup i mean the yeah. half the staff That's half the production credits uh are represented here now in these four people. And that's, there, that's there were true. four other people that did the rest. And uh, yeah, that's then true. there was a lawyer. And <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys oh, was yes. a lawyer. Well, it was it's like uh, um, the very week that we bought our first 35 millimeter camera was the week that we were sitting there in the bar. And uh, hmm. you know now we had everything we needed, including the, uh, the, the camera. Where and that was a used camera, wasn't it? It was a used, right. used sure. a heavy millimeter. 80 pound blimp 35 millimeter camera that, oh, yes. that uh, remember the burden that it was yeah very well uh, just setting up <laughs> shots and uh, and uh, getting the mat uh, the the lenses in that thing and the, just transporting it from one one area of the house to the next that's a, a mm -hmm. recollection although there was the equipment was clumsy and awkward at the time there was so much energy mm -hmm. you you hardly don't remember right. it as being an encumbrance it was our stuff. He also didn't think he'd get the role because Rudy Ritchie was, was going to play that role originally. Yeah. He was one of our friends and shareholders mm -hmm. and Dwayne just assumed, well, you're white, you're a shareholder, and you're a close friend of these guys and I'm not going to get the part. And he was actually stunned when he got the part. Yeah, he but was Dwayne visiting was from New York, visiting his uh, mm -hmm. family in That's, Duquesne. But you yeah. guys knew him, didn't friend. you? No, Mary was, Ellen uh, knew him. Mary Ellen Hawley oh, knew, knew him. Oh, so okay. he was a, a, a friend of a mutual friend. Yeah. Oh, I see, okay. I think it wasn't until when he did his big table scene that, you know, ripping the table apart and all that, which was his big speech. <laughs> mm -hmm. And. Uh, there was this big catharsis that day when he suddenly realized that all of us were pulling for him and we were all in this together. Yeah. And uh, up to that moment, he still felt like, like an outsider. Maybe. Yes, yes, he did. Yeah. And that uh, was that, too after bad. that, he just, he just collapsed in tears and went around shaking our hands and hugging us. And he mm -hmm. realized that, you know, white, black, or whatever, we were, yeah. we were right. all. Right. At all, first, he yeah, thought he would never get the role. And then I think, then he thought, was he being exploited to something? I mean, he went right. through all those there, exactly, about, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and then finally realized, hey, we're just making a movie, you know? mm -hmm. or we're we're all sort of trying to, you know, get this. Yeah, the color didn't night. have anything to do no. with it. No, That's it didn't. The simple no. fact of it. Repeating this latest bulletin just received moments ago from Cumberland, Maryland, civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. That was a, a thing that sort of evolved, and it got it got 
har harder and harder and heavier and heavier. We did initially say we're going to go a little further than these other movies go. But then we kept watching dailies and realized we weren't, maybe we could go another inch, maybe we could go another inch. In the end, the last shoot mm -hmm. that we went out and did was almost specifically to, we were filling some plot points too, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. went out specifically to get a few more uh, graphic shots. I mean, you look at the film now and it looks really tame. Oh, compared with what's compared with well, we knew that we sense? had to be sure. iconoclastic with the picture. We figured maybe nobody would want to distribute it, and we'd end up carrying it by hand to the various drive-in theaters and selling it that way. So we wanted to make sure it would get noticed. So we were always breaking new ground uh, intentionally yeah. and forcing forcing the picture into into more daring areas than than other films had gone. One of the things that uh, speaking of the gore. Uh, that led to you know, what we did there was the fact that one of one of the people involved, Ross Harris, had a chain of meat stores, butcher shops is what they're called, <laughs> meat store, <laughs> butcher shop. And uh, Ross uh, went out to uh, slaughterhouses and bought product, and he said, "Listen, I can get entrails, I can get livers. He said, I can get anything you want from when I go to the slaughterhouse." And he uh, he made good on his promise, and that's why we. Right. Uh, one of the reasons we went that way. It started a whole subgenre. Little did we know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I know that one of the things that uh, that we talked about early on was not making the special effects, the gunshots and so forth, too ambitious. That whatever we did, we wanted to be able to pull off well. Mm -hmm. Right. And with uh, Reed Servinsky and some of those folks, we were at least able to execute. Mm -hmm gunshots and bullet holes and that kind of thing. With rather. good reality. Yeah. Again, With good reality <laughs> and, and I think that all kind of helped the movie too but mm -hmm. then as George says you you know you test a little bit with this and and eventually ratchet it up to where it is now but where it is now is is so so uh, modest compared to what has been done since. With today. Yeah. 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 Well you know there isn't we didn't do a headshot they they didn't they refuse to do squibs on the head. Yeah. And so every zombie that gets shot in the head gets, you know, you see the reaction right. and then you cut to a, an, a, a, mm -hmm. uh, an existing an makeup that's yeah. right. already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only squibs are, in the are on, bo uh, on the body. Right. Yeah, I think the first one we did that way was Richard Ritchie right. at, the, uh, window, at the window and he gets shot in the head. The back finally. of the head. Right. And that was yeah. because he was one of the investors and he had no choice but matter. to put a squib <laughs> yeah. on the back of his head. And that, that, you know, that's a good point, Ross. You mean there's a squib on his head? Yeah. The, Are you yeah. Sure? I, I really but must not have been I around. Think he was, he was, he was <laughs> wrestling with I thought the, we did some sort of a gizmo on the front of his head that wasn't really a squib. The script. reason you forgot that it was there, and I forgot too until Russ just mentioned it, it uh, we had a thing on the front of his head, yeah. but we shot the squib, but the it was too dark and it never really registered. Right. You barely <laughs> see it. But the thing I was, like Russ mentioned before uh, about yes. investors helping us go into new areas where, you know, Vince's, Vince Servinsky's brother Reed came in as an investor and turned out to be a fireworks specialist. And, and, and uh, just like the, mm -hmm. you know, Carl's friend, Ross Harris came in and, and furnished the, the I'm a specialist parts. with entrails. Here yes. comes uh, <laughs> Vince and, uh, uh, and Reach. Reach and, and because of having them there, we were able to do the demolitions and the squibs, which we, we really didn't count on right. going in. The whole newsroom environment was created yeah. at your uh, recording studio. Hardin Associates. Uh, right. at, uh, With real yeah. professional <laughs> annunciatorial types. <laughs> yes. yes. <People> were, <laughs> and it looked good, you know, because we it had that great. big... Uh, control room deck that looked down into uh, yeah. the studios on on both sides, okay. so it, it looked real. But, but great, those sequences are often talked about as some of the the stuff that really plays, uh, you know, very the the, the authentically, news, the, yeah, the, the newsreel stuff and yeah. the, you know announcing the um, rescue centers and all that. And Chuck yeah, didn't right. Chuck write Chuck his Craig. own copy. Uh, I mean, he yes, was a he news did. guy and he wrote uh, his own copy. Chuck I think. Craig, that's right. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims.
the thing about the, the names of the towns at the bottom of the screen was another attempt on our part to make sure that maybe the picture would attract some attention because we picture, we picked real towns in, in the Pittsburgh area thinking, mm -hmm. you know, well, people that see Clareton up there or McKeesport, Glassport, they're going to talk about that and get us some word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it worked, but we were calculating every, <laughs> every single shot that we could. It didn't work real well in Indianapolis or Chicago. <laughs> no, they hated it. <laughs> they, they didn't know any of the names of the towns. <laughs>
one of them mm -hmm. didn't have, in Evans City, Pennsylvania, who would guess that you could find uh, two identical trucks that matched, and one uh, didn't operate, it had to be towed. That's the one that, that blew the up. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> the night that that sequence was uh, filmed, I can remember being astounded at the number of people who showed up. And I mean, mm -hmm. as I recall, that was, it was like two o'clock or one o'clock in the morning or something like that when that eventually filmed and there were people out with, you know, huddled in blankets and everything else. Uh, that kind of surprised me that people would be that interested to see a movie being made in their backyard. Well, I think that's the reason, you know, it was a, in, the, in their view, this was a real big time movie. And uh, they hadn't ever seen anything like that before. So, dang, we got to go out there and watch him burn that truck. They're going to do that tonight. <laughs> Pleasant things that, that I recall was uh, the sanitary facilities, oh, under, which were non-existent. Right. Non-existent. An yeah. outhouse and uh, uh, there was That's a pump, sure. wasn't there? Right. And yep. you had to, <clears throat> if you wanted to use the John outhouse, uh, you had to carry a bucket of water with you. To, uh, we used to carry um, fifty uh, gallon or thirty gallon uh, garbage cans full of water from a place about a hundred yards away and down a hill. That's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. And yeah. then we'd fill the back of the commode so that when you hit the handle, something would yeah. be in there. To Vince did double duty on, on all of that all stuff. All of that, though. absolutely. Yes, he did. I mean, he was the only he guy willing did. to go down. He, actually, he was the only guy who took a bath during the whole production, I think, because he was willing to jump into that cold river at, mm. in November. Well, we took baths, yeah, but we but did. We had to heat the water. Heat the water. Uh, you Vince, and Vince just went and I right and Gary lived there for the most part. Yeah. And then we, we'd, we'd heat I up bathe. enough water to take <laughs> cat baths. and. And, uh, right, our, and we had sleeping on those couches, and we had these dummies and mannequins around. Remember, and remember <laughs> that some every once in a while there were there were a few incidents where kids from the town would come out at night, you know, like uh -huh. to bring their date out to show them these like weird looking mannequins that were inside this house where they were shooting this, the movie. They were all made up as zombies with ping pong ball eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we use them the for kids are the uh, mannequins. like <laughs> setting them on <laughs> the fire. Kids, and yeah. <laughs> but that, there, the the other thing that, w that that cracked me up was when we had those. Uh, we slept on uh, uh, army uh, army surplus cots, and every day, when George climbed into his cot, he'd say, "This will never hold me." <laughs> And then he'd lie down and go to sleep. And it would hold him. And after about ten times of this, he said, this will never hold, hold me. And he went down right through the cot, through the canvas and everything. He's on the floor with his feet sticking up in the air. I was right That's how you that. ended up on the couch. That's how I ended up on the couch, right? I was a large enough object that I got the couch. I think it was, it, it was kind of interesting also, the lucky coincidence of the finding duplicate trucks, but also the, the uh, finding a place, finding a house, a house. Yes. that was uh, going to be torn down. So it didn't make mm -hmm. any difference what we did to the place, yeah. because it, once mm -hmm. we were finished with it, they were going to knock it down anyway. And I think it today, still to this day, is a turf farm. Yes, it is. There's grass there. The last well, time. I mean, it, a lot of that's luck, but you know, I mean, and on a serious note, really the way it happened was tenacity. I mean, we yeah. were going to get yeah. that movie made some One way, way or, or another. another. Whatever it takes. And I think yeah. it was really at the core of the group, the core of the group, not all ten, but at least seven or eight of us were determined determined yeah. to make the movie. Yeah, because we did look at a number <laughs> of houses, and Carl and Marilyn found one, and the ceilings were too low, and we could have gone mm -hmm. with it and suffered through the hat, but we, we hung in there till we found a place that was 
exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and of course, we had the Vince fix it remember, yeah. Remember, you couldn't get to it in a vehicle. That's, yeah. that's right. And Vince built, right. went out there and built a bridge over the thing, and yep. he, maybe he, he found old antique yeah. furniture and like fixed the joint. I mean, he was. He, and he made a fireplace where there wasn't a fireplace. Right. And right. Made the and secret, created a door. Secret door to the basement, basement door. Where yeah. There wasn't yeah. even a basement. Yeah. So it was, and then, then just furnishing it with. Uh, Things like your coat tree, yes. you know, it's and your your antique radios, and oh, the all old of Zenith. us brought stuff yes. out there, and we bought stuff from Goodwill, and you know, before yeah. you knew it, the place was uh, looked it was like furnished it was, and looked like it was a, an old farmhouse. Right. Yeah. I wonder how how much a group like this, an entrepreneurial group like this, is responsible for what has happened in general to movie making and the cost of production. You know, as recently as the the remake. Uh, in uh, a couple of a couple of years ago, I think at its largest there were like 115 people on the crew, and you kind of stand around and scratch your head if you have that perspective of mm -hmm. being involved in the original movie, mm -hmm. and then you stand around and you say, "Well, geez, 115 people—that's more than we had in the cast in the mm -hmm. uh, in the, the first film, including the posse and everybody else." Mm -hmm. And you say, hmm, I wonder, you know, how how much are we really buying here? You know, it's uh, well, well, you know, you can't. I mean, the problem is, if to, I mean, t theoretically, we shouldn't have been able to do it either. I mean, it's what That's we right. were saying before. We had equipment, yeah. we had the tenacity, we had, were willing to go out there and spend all that time when you know when when we all had. Or we're trying well, to. I mean, you guys two. had a real, really going business at that at the time. We had one yeah. that we were trying to get going, and we, we, mm -hmm. you know, we all should have probably been back in town uh, looking for the next client. But you know, I think just that drive and, and desire, and you know, just just took it uh, over the top. But that think, energy, plus the fact that you know that we were, we also, I think, did <clears throat> did in the end wind up doing it, you know, pretty democratically. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, because we yes. uh, initially you were going to direct, and I mean, then right. and then I wound up directing, and all the stuff. I mean, we avoided big fights. I dragged you out there and feed you those things. <laughs> George was saying, our businesses were on hold. Our businesses weren't on hold. Our entire lives were on hold mm -hmm. during that period through through getting the commercial business going and making our first feature and and so on. We just didn't live like normal people. We put everything we had into well <laughs> into the film business. You know, it truly was a group effort. You yeah. know, a, a democratic group effort, but there was also a great deal of raw talent there, a great deal of raw talent, which uh, I don't think we should discount. Oh, yeah. Uh, For you know, all of us involved. No, no. Had Good talents. instincts to start Absolutely. off with. And, and there is a tendency to do that. I mean, I always say, geez, I, 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 it's hard for me to even watch the movie still because all I see are the flaws. But mm. then every once in a while I get, you know, much mellower towards it and I have really fond memories of yeah. all of that. And I think mm -hmm. it is true that we, we, I mean, we did a good job given under the circumstances. Yes. We did a fabulous job. I mean, it's like, yep. uh, and the movie works. It does work. It and does you tend work. to forget that because you get critical mm -hmm. of it and you say, Ay, and you start yeah. thinking of what happened and right. this and that and it should have been that. And we, eh, yeah. but, but it works. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. Well, they were, they were really good days. They were deadly in many respects, uh. but uh, they were great. They really were great. I think it was uh, also. I mean, how many people really cooperated with us and came yeah. out? People from advertising, people that we yes. worked with. I mean, there are hundreds well, everyone, of people. Well, The big days, those big days with the helicopter, the IIC, yeah. cooperation from IIC, and your and friends was, in the biz and our friends in the biz yes. that came out. 
painted, you know, mm -hmm. the ambulance. I remember that ambulance. That was the first major prop that I was ever yeah. within 10 feet of in my life. Oh, and it was yeah. like, oh, God, it's, whoa, oh, man. check it out, man. This looks you, real. You, you're talking about the blue uh, mercury. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that, that was, right. Did, that did I ever tell you the, the, the story of that? Yeah, I borrowed that car from uh, a Lincoln dealer who's no longer in business. Can't think of the name, though. Probably but, because of giving you the car, yeah. and then I think I think the story you're going to tell behind it. Well, you know, well, you pro I probably did tell you, but um, it was Willard, uh, Willard. Right, that's right, the uh, town of Willard, Willard. I don't know. If I anyway, the, the sign on we had a black right. sign made. Right. Um, no, it was painted right on the painted car. on the car. It was painted on the car. Washable. <laughs> that's why it looked so great. Paint. None of this. <clears throat> Took the car back. Stuff. <laughs> They um, they removed the the black paint Willard, uh, and it didn't disappear. <laughs> there was a faint image of Willard. Willard. <laughs> so they had, they had to and wind this guy's up. name was not Willard, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it wasn't. <laughs> they had to wind up painting both sides of that station wagon, and they were really hacked. Yeah, they were <laughs> not really uh, thrilled. I didn't know that. Yeah, they apparently <laughs> something in the pigmentation of the paint. Mm -hmm. left enough of a residual image that you're yes. trying to pass this off as a brand spanking new card. <laughs> well, Why does it say Willard on the side? <laughs> well, you see, the police department bought it, and then they, but they never, uh, yeah. <laughs> they never drove it out of here. And I think that there are little, little moments like that that, you, that we have all forgotten about that, right. well, that no. kind of make the that. The Washington, D.C segment was almost oh. the same yeah. thing where it was just like a pic I remember yeah, it was like we a were picnic. all in we the got downstairs. in a bunch of cars and dro road drove down there yeah. and mm -hmm. we were in we the shot down at 16 right before we that wasn't in the script to go to Washington no I know I know and I'm, we I'm were trying all, to remember we just jumped in the cars we shot yeah. that with uh, eclairs right 16 uh, yeah uh, yes yeah well, we shot yes. With, uh, yeah, right. At least the, uh, was, it, was it in shot the with the an eclair? I don't well, know. Yeah, because it, it, it was going to go in the um, television, be matted into Mad the television right, right. screen, so we figured we might as well shoot 16 and save some money. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, we started thinking, well, what can this sequence be? And we're, we have a whole movie where people don't even come out of this farmhouse, and yet this is supposed to be happening on a national, if not worldwide, mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. And so, how can we indicate that? And, and uh, I think I was the first person to mention, well, let's just go to Washington, D.C., zap. Next morning, yeah. Carl Slap had his car made up. Slap some flags on Carl's car. I don't Carl's know what car. you went through to do that. <laughs> I wanted to go to Afghanistan, and they, no, it couldn't <laughs> possible. Remember, well, you, you, were had, always you had a, a big weird. Lincoln, didn't you? Yeah, Carl? you had the Lincoln. Yeah, that was put Carl's the flags your on. car that's in the, in the scene, that, right? That looked great. The same mm -hmm. car we went and, uh, to uh, the drive-in in, I think. Well, it had to be, sure. Well, then you had to make flags because it had to be the general's car. Right. Right. I dug out my old Army uniform so I could be the Driver. You were the driver, right? And we got this rented. So, well, and somehow convinced the Al to come down there with us. Yeah, uh, we had trouble. Well, the um, the whole impersonating an officer <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> issue yes. did come up. That, that's right. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> And we uh, didn't have. Well, we got this we didn't general. have the uniform. Well, because we wanted to be within sight of the Capitol. Right, right, right. right. Not. I mean, it, that's the whole reason uh, for going down there. In, we a, in a restricted shot. area, and somebody, somebody. Uh, well, the, the we didn't call the, the Washington cops either. The I wonder how many fans. Guards. We're not going to call Pittsburgh police. Why would we call the Washington? <laughs> I wonder how many people realize that that that's where George has a cameo. I was going to say. I wonder, I wonder for the real trivia buffs. That's like for a guy who touched oh. every frame of the movie. It's the only scene in the movie that he shows up in. Mm, yeah. We did that that's on right. purpose. You stick a microphone into the general's. Yeah face or in the, in the right. scientist's face. Remember when Dwayne walloped me with the board? Yeah. He walloped you? I was shooting. Yeah. He, he, he swings whack. this big wooden board that he takes. I think he's swinging it at you, I guess. Yeah. I think it's or a is he's, No, he's, right. at, he's at the... Oh, he's, it's when he knocks the, the, the rifle out of your hand. Out of your right. hand. He, right. Yeah. And I was down uh, shooting, and I was handheld sort of on my knees, and I went like this, and he swung the board at you, and he got the camera. <laughs> Bang! Which got Ooh. me. Yikes. Everybody, everybody, everybody involved it. just got into it totally. Yeah. Well, it was before, uh, you know, uh, the Chicago Sun Times said to the world that we were mm. bastards for it. <laughs> right. How low yes. would pe will people sink to make a buck? <clears throat> Thank you.
But, you know, I think it's all that stuff that was really lucky stuff for the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. we, we were getting attention <clears throat> for, and, you know, that. And then, I mean, then, yeah. I, then, remember, we thought it was over. Remember, we said, oh, hey, we did pretty good. And, we was, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. they France, and they started to show it when they re-released it under Slaves over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like it sort of it came back from the dead. <clears throat> remember when we went out in your big car and took a little, uh, I think, a jug of something to drink and went out to a drive-in to see the movie. It was one of the most thrilling... I don't remember that. You don't remember? See, that's a, it's too late. I remember we went out in your car to a drive-in to watch this movie, and this was our movie on a real drive-in screen. screen. And we didn't have to run the projector. <laughs> and <there> was... <laughs> Well, you want to get about four or five men and a couple dogs, there's a house over here behind those trees. We want to go check it out. Frank, you stay here, Bill. Yeah, Chief, we're going to stay with it till we meet up with the National Guard. Where'd you get the coffee? One of the volunteers, you're doing all the work, you take it. Thank you. And really, in retrospect, given the times, given the anger of the times, and given, you know, what then subsequently did happen with, you know, the the you know, King assassination the and the riots and all of that. I mean, boy, if we had ended it any other yeah. way, it would be hard for us to hold our, our heads up in a way. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but we weren't out to make a heavy statement, as I recall. It was like, you know. Well, again, and you were the guy that kept bringing that back, too. We didn't want that. To, we didn't want to get carried away in politics. Mm -hmm. But we used mm -hmm. to bullshit a lot on those cots about, you know, that stuff. But it, I, we always wanted to make, do it as a roller coaster ride and never let go of the roller coaster ride. I, I Jack was the guy that kept saying, you got, it's got to be a roller coaster ride. Well, I had an I, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers in mind when I, I walked into that movie not knowing what it was going to be, be about, and I came out utterly stunned because the ending was un, uncompromising, at least the yeah. ending mm -hmm. I right. saw. And I said if we could make the audience come out with those same stunned looks on their face, then we'd have a you know, successful a movie. Yeah. You. Drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. Nothing down here. All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. Here's something there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire.
this is what kind of uh, brought it all to a, a final focal point for me. You know, being inducted into the Horror Hall of Fame. How much did that cost us? <laughs>